to us, whether it's in terms of peace and stability, a more equitable and peaceful world, uh, or the creation of more stable markets with which we can trade, uh, it's an investment that pays off in the end. And by doing more, we can yield more benefits and more quickly to us and also to people around the world. And that's a message that I think the United States and the people of this country very much want to send. When we spend a dollar fifty to send a girl to school. What we are getting for that money is a child who will live longer, who will wait to get married, have fewer children, will educate her children, and her grandchildren are more likely to be educated as well. We not only get those immediate benefits, but we open up her hopes and her dreams to become a contributing citizen to making this world a better place for all of us. We get an enormous amount from the investments that we make uh, in people around the world. I think we need to think about whether we're doing enough to achieve the goals that we really have in mind in terms of enhancing global security, in terms of, of, uh, of providing uh, economic opportunities, uh, and in terms of spreading, spreading democracy. And whereas we do make some investments and we do some things right, we really do underinvest in these areas and we haven't really achieved those goals. Global poverty is still with us. Uh, diseases around the world are, are rampant and with relatively small investments, we can make a big difference. Uh, malaria can be cured for two and a half dollars per person, about the cost of a cup of Starbucks. We can actually cure someone of malaria. Uh, uh, for HIV AIDS, it costs about $40 a year, which is what you spend to take three people to the movies and get popcorn once a year. Uh, and if every American made that contribution, we could make a huge dent in stopping the HIV AIDS crisis uh, in Africa. Uh, rolling back tuberculosis costs about five dollars uh, per year of life in tuberculosis, uh, which again is, is, is the cost of, of going to McDonald's once a year. So with, with, with some relatively small investments, we can do even, even better than what we do now. I think part of it is understanding what's possible. I think that there's uh, a tendency to think that our energy problems are hopeless. It seems so big and so complex, so difficult. We've been talking about problems like oil dependence, now climate change. They seem too big for most people to get their hands around. But I think that the hopeful news is there are new technologies that are coming along that with some government investment, uh, we can advance into the marketplace and literally create a new wave of economic growth that is not unlike what happened with the internet or with telecommunications that can open up new opportunities that we don't even really fully understand today. You know, most people can walk and chew gum at the same time and a great nation can both show uh, its, its commitment to its own people and at least a minimal commitment to people around the world because the values that we have in our country are not values that, are, that end at our borders. They are more universal values. That's what, our country, that's what our country is built on. Also, too, one's not asking for that much. In the United States, we spend perhaps 250 or $300 million on education on poor children around the world. That's what one American city spends to build about 15 high schools. We need to understand that the tools that we've developed over the last decades, which may very well have served a purpose during the Cold War, are no longer adequate for the kind of security challenges that we're facing today. Someone put it to me once is that we don't do a very good job of preventive health care of our own security system, and so by the time we notice something, it's already in the emergency room. Most Americans can realize that in order to have a healthy, long life, you need to take care of yourself from a very young age and develop a healthy regime over time. We need to look at that in terms of our own foreign policy. It's difficult to measure, yes. Sometimes it's not as satisfying as an us versus them or a good versus evil framework for understanding the world, but truly for it to have longevity and stability 
and international cooperation that can only help us, we need to understand that security has to be a long-term relationship-building process. Thank you.